Okay, children, let's start the day with a few new math problems. What is five times two? Come on, children, don't be shy. Just give it your best shot. Yes, Clyde? Twelve. Okay, now let's try to get an answer from someone who's not a complete retard. Anyone? Come on, don't be shy. I think I know the answer, Mr. Garrison. Me, 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 me. Shut up, fat boy. Hey, don't call me fat, you oh. fucking Jew. Eric, did you just say the F word? Jew? No, he's talking about... Oh. You can't say oh. fucking school, you oh. fucking fat ass. Kyle! Why the f- oh. No, I... Eric! Dude, you just said oh. fuck again. Stanley! Who? Kenny! What's the big deal? It doesn't hurt anybody. Oh, oh, Kenny. oh, oh. Oh. How would you like to go see the school counselor? How would you like to suck my... <gasps> what did you say? Uh, I- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Actually, what I said was... <coughs> How would you like to suck my... <coughs> Mr. Darcy? Holy... <coughs> dude. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? <laughs> This is madness! This is a booth! African. No. He was American and he was like you. He looked just like you. He was Jewish. Just Jewish. like okay. you. Jew. Okay. It's an odd crime for a Jew to yeah, kill. I'm pretty docile. Okay, so we have an African Jew wearing a hoodie. No, you don't. No. no, that's not what I said. Is that what you heard me say? I said he looked like you. Do you look like an African Jew? No, I look like a cock. Yeah. <sighs> he was Caucasian. All right, your boy Sinister One broadcasting live from the city of champions. You are listening to the booth half year, January 9th. We are back, back with a vengeance, and we got a lot of crap to talk about. And speaking of crap, if my voice sounds crazy, but just before we went on the air, I'm down in the man cave in the man studio, and my cat decides to drop a deuce in the litter box. Really? <laughs> Do we really need to hear about that? Oh, come on. I'm yeah. Not already. yeah. I don't want to hear about your cat's bowel movement. My eyes are tearing up. It's I so don't bad. care. <laughs> it's like it and get on with it. Like it's like the curse of the, I don't know. Somebody's it's like somebody that was dead that that loved me is playing the best joke on me ever. Somebody up in heaven's like, oh, I got to do this to Keith right now. Send the cat in there. Have him drop a big ass deuce in the litter box. All right, enough, enough. All right. You know, <laughs> so uh, we're back on the air. Tearing it up, uh, but he's a like me. He's a he's a history buff, and he recently got into Call of Duty, um, the World War Two version. Is that the newest mm-hmm. one? Yes. Okay, so he's like going to me. You know, he's like, "Why don't you come on and play online?" Because his family's got a new Xbox. Oh, so Xbox you actually did. One. So you yeah. actually did play Call of Duty World War Two? Well, I went to his house and did it. Okay. okay. Yeah, let's hear about this. And it was freaking awesome. The problem is, I just like forgot to reload the gun. That maybe was right, and, and I and I kept throwing grenades at my own people. <laughs> oh yeah, but these are like the real thing, huh, Sinister One? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's funny because yeah, there is friendly fire in the game. Right, uh, yeah, you can actually blow up your own people. I guess I shot down one of my own. And actually, I found one of the heavy machine guns. This is great. So, and, the, and, the, and then the planes are coming over strafing us, and I shot down one of my own planes. Well, the career, you know what, the career mode in that game is is friggin' awesome. Um, I, I I haven't finished the career mode yet. I've actually gotten to the point where um, I reunite with one of the guys that I say one of my guys in my platoon who was stabbed in the, by a bayonet. And we get back together, and we have to take the Reich out of – I forget which – it's one of these big battles where the tanks had to go in and, and take over. Because everything's real, everything really – all of this stuff really happened. Um, but it's there's some city that they had to take. Right. Because the Germans were set up there with um, air artillery, and they were shooting our bombers down. And um, we had to go in on the tanks, and it was like this small platoon of tanks. And the scene – when you're playing, it's just incredible because you're driving at full speed in this tank, and you're coming into town, and you're shooting people from the machine guns up top, and and it's just oh yeah, it's just it's just crazy. And then they order you to take the sniper rifle, and you got to go up in the tower, and you got to shoot the guys that are going to take out the artillery. Oh, it's just it's a really good game, you know. And it's you know it's a lot of good games. A lot of good games came out, but I don't want to tie down the show with video games. Yeah, I think that was Hamelberg, and Colonel Clink was in charge of the group there <laughs> so we, we guys we had a lot of politics go down that we sat in our chat and we friggin we wanted to talk about so much but we weren't on the air we had crazy tweets from trump we had this whole book come out and you know some of the questions that were being asked like all of a sudden you know they had said that a lot of these things were lies and when the book came out, Trump says that the book is a lie, it's, it's all false, and blah, blah, blah. But then the next day, Trump comes out and says, nobody can have cell phones, and nobody works in the place in the White House. And I'm saying to myself, what a big, huge contradiction. You you claim the book is false, and it's this and that, and then the next day, you put together a plan to no cell phone use by employees or anybody or staffers in the White House. I'm like, and then the reason why is because of the leaks in the book. I was... And then he says he, he this is his first time out running for president, forgetting that he ran. Guys, I'm just gonna let me just start, I'll start off with our squared first. What was the most craziest thing that you politically that just drove you bananas in the two weeks that we were off the air? Oh my goodness! I mean, where do you start with that? It was <laughs> it was really interesting because you know, most years you can sort of expect and appreciate a little downtime over these couple of weeks where everybody takes a break, but. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's just, this is just an unusual year, and everybody's already getting into the 2018 elections, and you know, it never stopped because of the investigation going on. I think you know the way that we ended the year, and uh, I think we were all pretty outraged. I know I've written about it on our blog. Is this whole you know rogue cabal going on in the House in, uh, Intelligence Committee with uh, trying to you know protect and prevent any investigation against the Trump campaign and going off on the FBI. I mean, we're now going to you know, do a thorough investigation of the FBI to waste the next year so that there can't be any continuation of the investigation or any finalization before the 2018 election. It's just such a blatant uh, misuse of authority that it can't be excused. That's what set me off. Ken, you, for your, for your two weeks, what was the most craziest day? Because we, like he said, those two weeks is usually quiet from the White House, and it wasn't. And it started right off with him coming out and saying that, you know, he didn't, he only backed uh, the, the gentleman who lost the election. He said he only backed him because he was that Republican candidate. And it was like, okay, so you're admitting that it's politics as usual and you're not draining the swamp like you said you would. You're, it's just business as usual. I was driven crazy by that one. Go ahead, Ken. Ken? Did okay. we lose Ken? Did we lose Hello? Ken? That's there? there, there? Yeah. Yeah, no, okay. we got you. I, I got to. St- apparently, I can't slouch when I'm talking. I got to sit straight up. <laughs> <laughs> so, what drove you crazy? Well, drove me crazy weeks? were two things. Number one was the comment about who's got a bigger button on their desk for nuclear weapons. Ooh, that's a good. That's one. a good one. Uh, yeah. That really got me scared because literally, this is taking a dick measuring contest to very dangerous places. And the second one, going back to Ray, Roy, Roy Moore who threatened a lawsuit over the election loss, even after it was certified. So that just drove me – I mean, really? This was after the election was certified by the Republican Secretary of State of Alabama. 
and his statements that they bust in illegals and blacks from Mississippi. Yeah, it so was just outrageous. I mean, that, talking that about just, fake that news, was like, there was not a shred of evidence to support it. Exactly. No and, official in Alabama, you know, in the Republican Party, to their credit, even blinked at it. So, right. Actually, can I give a third one? Of, I know I'm only supposed to give two. No, yeah, give no. Any, anything that drove you crazy in the two weeks, just let it well, rip, man. As you know, after <clears throat> Trump, after the election, Trump said that if the – all the illegal votes that were discounted, he would have won beat Hillary Clinton in a popular vote landslide. Because let's remember, according to the popular vote, he didn't win that. So he put together this uh, voter fraud commission, mm, yep. wasted God knows how many millions of dollars, met twice, and then he disbanded it after they didn't find anything. And he claimed the reason he disbanded it was he wasn't getting any cooperation from the states. Mm. That just – I was just happy to see that get disbanded because that was nothing more than a voter suppression effort, and everybody knew it. Uh, and when he realized he couldn't get away with it uh, and there was no legitimacy whatsoever to the voter fraud issue, they had to drop it. The scary part is he's not dropping the issue. He's made a formal re referral to Homeland Security, which does have oversight of this issue in the first place, and he's asked them to take a look at it, and you know they will. Mm. Yeah, cra crazy stuff, and you know, and it, and it just continues. Like we, you know, we we're back on the air here after taking our Christmas break, and you know, the Golden Globes was the other night, and you know, there's this whole big to do about Oprah Winfrey possibly making a run in 2020, and I had mentioned Oprah Winfrey on this show way back as a, as a as a possible Democratic candidate for the election before Obama. You know, I felt she's very powerful, she's very well spoken. Um, we're hearing the Rock is throwing his hat in, but after. You know, we get this speech from from um, Oprah Winfrey. Ivanka Trump comes out and and backs her words. And now a lot of people are attacking Ivanka Trump. They're bashing her. And I feel I actually feel kind of bad for Ivanka because we've talked about Ivanka on this show, and we've said that Ivanka has has made no bones about her relationship with her and her dad. We know that Jared Kushner and Ivanka are big Democrats. Um, we know where they stand with the Democratic Party. And um, we know that Ivanka and her dad have had some serious discussions um, when this whole transgender thing had came about in the military, which is shot down. Uh, transgenders will be back in the military um, as of, I think it's next month. Uh, but Ivanka was very vocal about that. Um, and when Trump wanted to take away the adoption rights for for gays and lesbians, um, her and Jared were very vocal on that. So for her to come out and and back and Oprah Winfrey, I I say that's I applaud her and say that's courage. Yet some people feel she should have just kept her mouth shut. I don't. I'm going to ask you guys how you feel. Squid, how do you feel about that? Do you think Ivanka should have just sided with her dad and supported her dad, or should she stayed the route that she's been? And she's been her own person, to be honest. I think it was a little bit more calculated than that. Uh, first of all, what I heard today was that they're referred to as Jarvanka now, so I think that's pretty funny. <laughs> so we can just talk about Jarvanka. It'll save us some time. <laughs> Jarvanka, I love that. Yeah, it's like so, they're like Bradgelina. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what Jarvanka was doing is, uh, you know, she she appreciated Oprah's words because let's face let's face it, anybody who heard that it was it was pretty darn powerful. It was a good message, and Oprah is one of those people that has the presence and bearing that she could make a comment like that and everybody listen. So you know, you know, it would be near impossible to to reject it. But what Ivanka said was, you know, she she supported the words and then said, let's all come together in unity. She didn't necessarily make it about supporting Oprah. So in other words, it was all about, hey, we can all agree on this. This isn't, this isn't a challenge to us. This isn't mm -hmm. a challenge to her father. This is about unity because we can all, all agree with it. See, So she took it away from being an adversarial thing to the administration or from mm -hmm. a, you know, what other people said was, hey, that was the first move of the Oprah campaign for 2020. First of all, I don't think that it is, but also yeah. – you know, she she specifically took it out of that camp and made it all about, oh, we all agree with that, so that's no big deal. So mm -hmm. I, I think it was a little bit more politically calculated than that. And then you heard the president today when he was being asked about it, oh, I love Oprah. I've known Oprah a long time. She's wonderful. She's wonderful. I love Oprah. Boy, she would be great, but she's not going to run against me. You know, so everybody's dismissing <laughs> it. And even Trump, he didn't say a one single even close to a bad thing about Oprah. He was as positive as you could be considering everybody's talking about someone who could challenge him. So – it, it, they were very calculated on this. I'll give them credit for staying on message discipline, I suppose. 
Well, she's got she's got a lot of power. My my big thing, guys, in the two weeks that we were out, that really sent me overboard about President Trump. Of all the things that happened, it was a tweet that came at seven twenty five in the morning regarding him patting himself on the back about twenty seventeen not having any commercial airline crashes and saying since he took office, there's been no airplane crashes and that's all due to him and his stringent restrictions in the airlines world. And I said to myself, did he really just go there? Like (laughs) there hasn't been a real commercial airline crash for the last three or four years. So where is he? 10 years. That, Ten years, yeah. yeah. Oh my well, God, that just it was the George me. Bush administration. The last time it hit George W. Bush administration. But where does he get off? The things that he takes credit for is what bugs me the most. He because, the, well, here's but here's what pisses me off about it, and you guys know. He says these things, and then you have a hundred people out there who are his followers and support him, and they believe that shit. And I hate yeah. to swear, but that's the scary part. There are people who will sit there and they will debate over coffee with you and say, but it is him. That's the reason why we didn't have any plane crashes in 2017. No, it's not. It's, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It has it, it, No. <laughs> well, that's fake news. That's all fake news. Oh, my God. I, it, it's, I, just, I just couldn't understand See, that. That's the problem. You know, you're, you're just... A Hillary supporter, you you know you don't understand. It's all fake news. I'm a common sense supporter, and um, even common sense would know that he had nothing to do with the fact that it, was the thing. it just. I, oh my god! <laughs> it, I, oh, oh. And then I, I I know there was a there was another one that he had that he put out there, and I just I just couldn't take it no more. I just I had to go and enjoy my family in Christmas. <laughs> well, that's what we should be doing, you know. <laughs> So I just I just couldn't deal with it anymore. So, but no, Paul. It was politics was crazy. We we you know we had a crazy two weeks that should have been quiet. Um, uh, as far as we do know, did they come to an agreement on the budget yet? Are we? No, 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 no. We've got a continuing resolution till I think March. March. Square, am I right? I think you're right. I think it's March. They they had that session today that couldn't have been right. scripted better by Hollywood, but it was. Uh, oh interesting to watch and you know we'll see what comes of that but yeah they have a couple of months now to try to work this out mm. we'll see what well, happens well i'm more concerned about the tax well i think we already covered this but they got trying to be a new year's resolution trying to be a little more positive the tax disaster yeah yep but that yep. we didn't really talk about that in too much detail because we had so much before we went on right. our hiatus yeah and- yeah it was it was, and it was kind of forced down our throats <laughs> Forced that through, and now we're hearing all the stuff about it, and we're hearing that Trump's going to get a nasty, you know, he's going to get himself a little bit more money, and you know that there's a lot well, of things now coming out that you know it's not going to benefit the middle class at all. The well, rich- we, everybody knew that. I mean, I think everybody knew that going in that that yeah. was a joke, <laughs> that that was just a, a cover, a sugar pill. It's not going to benefit the middle class because even even if you accept all of the savings at, at face value. Mm-hmm. Uh, the increase in the standard deduction, it goes away in eight years. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. So before we get into some more discussion, I got I to make an alert right now. I'm just going to make an alert. Ooh, spoiler alert, because I wanted to get into this conversation with you guys. So spoiler alert is out there. We're about to talk Star Wars. And I have to get into this discussion. We've been waiting to get into this discussion. Um, all three of us seen the movie. Ken actually attended the movie with me. We actually we actually saw it in 4D, where the yes. seats moved, and there's a couple of scenes where people jumped into water and the mist sprays up in your face. And when they're battling on on the ship, uh, there's smoke and you know there's fire and the, the sprays smoke in your face and stuff. It's pretty. It was it was it was pretty cool. It was, I'll, I'll have to say this. It was worth the 25 bucks for the ticket to see it in 4D. Um, so, again, spoiler alert. If you did not see Star Wars, you may want to turn your stuff down because there's some stuff that I got to discuss with these guys. There's some things that, you know, that this movie, again, if I had to gauge this movie, um, Empire is still my favorite, 
hands down, nothing has yet to beat Empire Strikes Back. As far as I'm concerned, Empire was perfect. Perfect. Um, this one here, just below Force Awakens, just below Return of the Jedi, above all of the other ones, Attack of the Clones and all the other ones. Um, I think I it's not better than New Hope. I'm sorry. No, it's not better than New Hope. I'm kind of torn on it being ahead of Rogue One because Rogue One was a separate story from the Star Wars, but it was just a great... Rogue One was still a great friggin' movie. But this movie here, it had some comic, you know, comical scenes in there. It was a little throwback to Spaceballs in the beginning of the movie. Um, but it was a great movie. I was, I was real happy at how it progressed. And we'll go around the horn. We'll see what everybody liked about it and what you didn't like. So... I'm going to start with R-Squared because R-Squared wasn't with me and Ken when we went to see it, so I want to hear what R-Squared has to say about the new Star Wars movie. Yeah, you know, I guess I left the theater feeling just a little bit disappointed. I mean, the movie wasn't bad. I've recommended everybody see it who has any interest in Star Wars, and so I, I certainly stay, you know, that that's my first and foremost thing is definitely go see it if you have any interest in the Star Wars movies because it is worth seeing. However, I was a little bit disappointed because uh, – so far, and, and maybe this will be true for eternity, but nothing has ever come close to the original three movies. And I get it. There was a brand new special effects and sound effects, and you know there was a lot of stuff that made that special. It was unique in so many ways, and of course we were all a little bit younger, uh, and that may have played part of it too. But the point is that you know then they made those the next three movies, and those were. Uh, let's say Abysmal. dramatically unpopular, <laughs> you know, and uh, and then and then they got back on track with some of the newer movies, but somehow, no matter what they do, even though the the storyline is there, uh, they've they've just never been able to recreate anything close to the magic and and you know whatever made us glued to our seats for the the first three movies. I mean, my point is, you know, with those movies were fairly long; they were full length movies, and I was just almost angry when they ended because I couldn't believe we would have to wait for another movie. I just wanted more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And these movies are like, okay, it's, it's done. That's great. There'll be another one coming and we'll see what happens next, but it was no big deal. So I just think that the, the characters aren't as, as good or, or there's just something missing. I don't know what it is. There's just something Ooh. missing. I feel a little debate coming on here when I get my turn. Go ahead, Ken, you. Again, I liked it. I don't think I was as disappointed as our squared was. I also, the fact that I'm 51 years old, I was 11 when Star Wars came out. My view is much more jaded. I liked it as a standalone film. It was not the original Star Wars, and nothing's ever going to be. Right. There are just certain, how do I say, genre-altering movies. Citizen Kane, Casablanca, The Sting. Uh, those, you know, they just create their own genres in Star Wars. I thought it was a good movie. I greatly enjoyed The Return of Master Yoda. Was yes. the best character. I like the humor in it. I also like the fact that all these characters were deeply flawed. It wasn't as black and white as in the old Star Wars. A lot of these guys screwed up and paid the price for screwing up. Mm. I thought that was much better. There wasn't this uniform command. Uh, I like the fact that Poe Dameron gets gets basically told. You know, hey, Flyboy, use your, you, you know, use your, you, you, you know, use the big head, not the little one. I thought that was very interesting. I had a real problem with one scene. Uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie, turn us off right now because I'm gonna, about to go into about one of the scenes, which is definitely a spoiler. I'm mm -hmm. counting it down from five, four, three, two, one. There is one scene where Carrie Fisher, Princess I knew Leia, it. Is, is in the command ship, and they the area, the bridge, whatever, observation deck, whatever you want to call it, gets blown out, and everyone gets thrown into space. I thought this is where she was going to die. I thought that was a great send-off for her. That yeah. was great. But somehow, she managed to fly back into the ship and survive. Yeah, and that was uh, my, that's my point that about how the movie no. just... It, it just that, that, that's why I was so disappointed and stuff like that. They they weren't true to the original storylines and the abilities. First of all, the explosion would have killed her no matter what power she right. had because that was a total destruction. And then secondly, of course, the, even Jedi's can't live in outer space like that. So come on now. Right, but I did enjoy the. You know, I thought one of the best uh, whole thing and the ending was when you know uh, 
Luke Skywalker takes on Kylo Ren, and I thought that was greatly done because I was convinced he's actually there. Apparently, he's not. He's a force projection. They totally had me. Of course, he didn't look anything. He looked 20 years younger, and how did he get to this place, and all the other stuff. They totally had me. Well done, guys. I I didn't see it coming. I love that part of it. Uh, I um I like the fact that Kylo Ren doesn't wear that stupid mask anymore, which is great because I couldn't stand it. Again, it wasn't the original Star Wars. It was a good film. I still think, and and Sister One's going to yell at me, that Rogue One is better than Force Awakens or The Last Jedi. I just think it's a much better made film. Again, it has my favorite character. It had Darth Vader in it. How bad can it be? So go see it. If no other reason than nostalgia, it's, it, but it is a good standalone film. So <clears throat> Ken mentioned one of my biggest complaints about the movie. Yes, it was it was the, the scene with Princess Leia. I, you know, we all knew something was going to happen because she did pass away during the filming of this movie. I feel I feel there was no better way to send her off than that way there. It was a very intense scene. Kylo Ren was not the person to pull the trigger. He had it. He could have did it, but he didn't do it. Um, and that scene was the only, to be honest, that one scene was the only scene that truly bothered me because it just threw everything out the window. Her being Force-sensitive and living in space and then getting back inside, and then they opened the doors, and it's like, okay, whatever happened to the vacuum of space? You can just open doors and let Princess Leia back on the bridge? I'm like, I'm like, okay, that doesn't seem right. So that whole thing was wrong there. As far as the characters, I, I tend to dis- disagree with R squared. I feel that the characters had a lot of what Ken says. They they all had something there. They were all flawed. I was like I said, I agree with Ken. I was very happy to see Poe Dameron knocked down a notch by Laura Dern's character. Um I thought the scene with Laura Dern, where she, you know, she commits suicide. She commits yeah. suicide with the ship. I don't know how that, and there was a big news story about this where they had to put warnings up in movie theaters because there were people bothered by this scene. <laughs> what? Because it was silence. It was, they thought that the sound broke. That's what the problem was. And, it, and people this is were something, just being stupid. Yeah, this, this is, this is, this has been used in, in this, if you're a big fan of anime, anime right. cartoons, this is used quite a bit in anime. Um, there's been a lot of, you know, Deep Space Nine has done it. Um, space Above and Beyond has done it. When you have these real dramatic in space scenes, even though you have these space battles and you can hear the lasers and all this stuff that you're not supposed to hear in space anyway, right. <laughs> they always use that effect of silence for drama. Aliens did it. Remember when she blew oh. up when, when Ripley yeah. blows up the ship? It the, the explosion happens in space and it's quiet. You've well, had it's, the, it's the flash, and that's it. Yep. Well, don't you remember in the original Alien, mm-hmm. the tagline was, "In space, no one can hear you scream." Yeah. Right. Yep. That's okay. right. So people, and then when I and when I saw that, I'm like, you know what? Sci-fi fans were, are not the people who. These are people who know absolutely nothing about sci-fi. Right. I mean, and that's been one of the biggest criticisms of Star Wars <laughs> and other films shot in space by science geeks who I know, and I know a lot of them always complain. You can't hear anything in space. You wouldn't hear any noise. Blah, 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 blah. blah. (laughs) And I think that was a big shout-out to all those science geeks. If I'm... Now, fine. Hold on. We're going to have silence. If I'm not mistaken, wasn't the original Battlestar Galactica, the the movie, the pilot movie, weren't the space battle scenes silent? Yes. They did not add the the, the latest until the scene started. Well, I think... Were they totally silent? No, you because they had theme music down there. Yes. There was mood music, but if you're talking about whether there was sounds of explosions, no, there was not. You saw the flashes, and you saw the explosion, but there was no... No. Exactly. And, then, and, when they, when the, and when the show became an actual TV series, that was one of the things they fixed right. from that movie, was they put the sound effects in because people hated it. Right. I thought that was one of the great things. I thought that was very realistic. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, but, you know, the thing is this. It was 11 seconds of silence. All right. Now, I would understand if it was if they stretched it out and whatever, it took a long time. It was a couple of minutes where there would be people sitting in the theater like, "Ooh, this is this is too long for silence. It must be something wrong. This was 11 seconds. It would take me more than 11 seconds to decide to get out of my seat if I thought the sound was off in the first place. Right? <laughs> I mean, that, 
I can't believe that there were people who went flying out of the theater before 11 seconds to go complain because that's why they put the warning up there because people were leaving the theater and complaining to management that the sound was broken. How stupid do you have to be? I mean, give me a break. Wait 12 seconds and the sound will be on and then you'll realize that it was you know, part of the film. I just don't get it. <laughs> oh, oh, really, really. R squared. No, no, no. Hold on a second. R squared. You, sir, along with me and Sister One, have been commenting for the past year on the mass stupidity of the American people. And now you are saying, wait a minute, how stupid can people be? Oh, but I, I strongly this, suggest I... you go reread your blogs for the answer to that question, sir. <laughs> I think this is just beyond the pale. <laughs> hey, hey, we got a lot hey, we got a lot of people in the chat. They're gonna say what's up to Ricky Fitz and Marky BBG Royster, Mitchell McKinnon who's watching the, uh, us on Facebook Live. Hey guys, thanks for hang, you know hanging out with us. Uh Ricky Fitz actually put in the uh Chad, he said, Lucas took a huge chance and succeeded with the first ones. And I'll give you a quick, great story about George Lucas and this film. Uh, George Lucas, to promote this film, he wanted to put a toy out with this film, the, the first original Star Wars movies. And at that time, you never attached toy releases with movies. So he reached out to Mattel. He reached out to all these companies. Everybody told him no. And he found this little company called Kenner in, yep. in, in San Francisco. And he approached him and they said, well, we don't have the money but we have this thing that we're working with, this new fast food restaurant called Burger King. And they said, how about we let them pay for the cost of the toy, and they'll release the toy with their burger. So when you got the Burger King meal, Whopper meal, you got a Star Wars character. Now, yep. at that time, that was a big deal because you received Boba Fett was one of those characters. Boba Fett wasn't even in the first Star Wars movie. You didn't see Boba Fett until Empire Strikes Back. Um, so that Okay, was hold, hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Those this, toys this are is worth is millions of dollars now. In the original cut... Before they edited it, Boba Fett was in the original movie. Yes, he was, but he was edited out. He was edited out. Yes. Well, yeah. you know, let's face it. Anytime you go to Burger King, you get a little Boba Fett. So what are you going to oh! do? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and for those who don't know what scene that Boba Fett was in that he was cut out of, when they're on the uh, Star Destroyer and Darth Vader is hiring uh, people to get Han Solo back, um, that's when we first see Boba Fett. And, you know, it was an uh, Empire, but in the original one, he was in it. Yes. He was, because in the original one, um, oh, oh, Christ, the name of the port where, where, um, where Han Solo first meets Luke Skywalker. What's the name of that? The Cantina. And, oh, yes. Not the Cantina, but the name of the city. Oh, my God. Oh. Guys, come on. We are oh. this pathetic. Moss Eisley. Moss Eisley. He's when they go. It's there's the Moss Eisley spaceport. Right. Yes. Moss Eisley spaceport. There's a scene that gets cut out in the original where you meet all the other characters meeting Empire Strikes Back. There's a scene with Han Solo. Yes. So, and that. And, okay. And, and Mitchell McKinnon, thanks for joining us. Mitchell McKinnon just posted. He said, "In my opinion, one of the best Star Wars films I've seen. There was a lot of suspense. There was." Here's my other gripe with Star Wars. I love the movies, but Star Wars does follow. The same story, plot, line. They go to a place, like this movie, they didn't go to Moss Eisley. They went to this casino planet. Last time, they went to meet the woman with the glasses. I forget the, the character's name, but they go to see her, and she's running this type of... So there's, it, it follows that same plot. It's it's the same thing every time. I got it. I'm good with it. It's, it's, a, it's a Hollywood thing. They do the same thing in the Marvel movies. I'm good with it. Um... As far as the suspense goes, I believe there was quite a bit of suspense in this movie. Um, one of the th things that I wanted to talk about, though, that was that I seen coming a mile away, Ken, and I don't know about you, R Squid. When you see a character such as Benicio, what's his name, the, the, the Italian guy there, mm -hmm. every movie he is in, he's going to be the bad guy. <laughs> As soon as they met up with him and took him out of the jail, I'm like, no, don't do it, man. He's going to screw you. <laughs> he's, it's like seeing oranges in the Godfather movie. Someone's going to die. He is bad, and no matter what movie he's in, he's always the bad guy. <laughs> don't do it, I said. I'm like, 
I'm like, he can't be good. He's going to swindle these guys and steal something from them. He's going to leave them hanging out to dry. Um, but it was it was a good day. Um, our squid, you had a problem with um, – Two things. You you had a problem with them killing Snoke off so quickly. You thought he was going to be a bigger character. And, Ken, you had an issue with uh, Captain Phasma. Yeah. So, um, uh, I'll let Ashway go first because a lot, a lot of people actually felt the thing about Snoke. They built Snoke up to this thing, this whole big thing, and then boom. I, I didn't have an issue with them killing him off. I thought that, that that was a necessary thing based on what they're going to do with Kylo Ren. <laughs> if he's going to sort of take control, you can't have Snoke. But what I thought was interesting was they they played him off as having some kind of power, uh, and then and then obviously he didn't have any power because he would have seen or felt instantly what was going to happen to him before he died. If you know what I mean, right. I don't want yes, to. Exactly. You know, I guess we could do a spoiler alert here, but the bottom line is since you know I guess everybody knows he dies because that's part of the discussion of the movie. But you know that the way that that went down was completely implausible in the sense of he clearly had power of some kind and he had power over Kylo Ren, which means he really had to have power. Uh, and then somehow he couldn't sense that there was a, a, an ounce of deception going on, let alone that the lightsaber was about to slice him in half. I mean, come on now. Mm-hmm. Ken. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. two, two, two comments I want to make. I agree mm-hmm. with that, except for the fact that a number of people are saying that he's not dead, that that was a force projection or a dummy or something else. And that, you know, we're about to see him come back because we've seen that kind of deception before. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, that's always been a common theme within Star Wars is the arrogance of the main antagonist. Mm -hmm. Um, In the first Star Wars New Hope, you know, when Grand Moff Tarkin is told by one of his subordinates and said, Sir, we've analyzed their attack patterns. There's a there's a problem. Should I prepare your shuttle? And Tarkin goes, "What in our moment of glory?" And they get yes. blown up. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, Empire's you know, Empire Strikes Back. You know, the Battle at Hoth. You know, you're as you know when I forget which one of the admirals that goes, "You're as you're as sloppy as you are stupid," and choke four strokes the guy. Mm-hmm. You know, when Darth Vader goes, you know, extends the thing to his son Luke, you know, join me, we'll rule the Empire, and Luke rather chooses choose death. Mm-hmm. So there's a common theme where arrogance and power go hand in hand, and people can't see past their own agenda. The other thing about it, and I will say this about Captain Phasma, there are two reasons why I like the character, because there's a number of books which I strongly recommend mm-hmm. that you read. There's a book called Phasma, which tells her backstory. Mm-hmm. And he really goes in the character of who she is, and she is not a true believer. She's a survivor, and she will kill, use anyone to survive. Uh, and also, if you read the novelization of Rogue One, not the, the, it gets into her character because she actually shows up in Rogue One in the no, uh, in um, the novelization as a child. Yes, not as Captain Phasma is not her name, but mm-hmm. she shows up in a very small portion, very important. Poor story, and I really think she's a fascinating character. And of course, the woman who plays her, whose name I can't remember, she's from she Game played, of Thrones, isn't she? Played, she? Yeah, she plays <clears throat> um, Brianna Tar in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Is an incredible actress, and I think she's great. And I think she plays Phasma great. And they just need to like expand on her. Well, so. let's see what happens because, as far as we know, she fell into fire and brimstone. Yeah, but she also got thrown in a gar- she already got thrown in a garbage shoot in the first movie. Yeah. And what what's his face uh from Phantom Menace, the guy who looks like, you know, Satan on crack, who got cut in half, but apparently he's alive now. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it, the the movie had some great moments. Um I I thought the whole scene with Luke Skywalker facing down Kylo Ren outside the rebel base, I thought that scene was was dead on. I thought it was dead on. I th- it built the suspense up, and I think every, I felt like everybody who watched Star Wars should have seen that coming. Yet they pulled it off. They got us. They got us. And you know we didn't realize it until the last minute. Right. Uh, it was it was it was great stuff. I know that originally when this movie was being filmed, that um you know he wasn't he, you know Mark Hamill wasn't happy with how. The story was progressing with this character, but then when it all came together and he saw the fi- the finished product, he was happy at how it you know how yeah. it was. I think when I watched this movie, I felt the same way too as him because they were almost spinning it like Luke had went dark, and they almost had us believing that right. Luke was dark, and then they hit you with it, and it was like, oh man, K- 
Kylo is dark and Kylo is the bad guy and there's no good in Kylo Ren. There there is no good. Yeah. I mean, so. that's what I liked about it. I liked the fact that they you know they really started you know playing around with what is the meaning of good. I mean, well, let me ask you guys this one too. The the kid I forget his name that plays Kylo Ren, the actor. Right. Uh, I had a little problem with him in The Force Awakens. I had I I couldn't. He didn't have that. Like, like I knew he was torn, but he didn't he didn't have it for me. Like that like that evil like when you saw Darth Vader, you knew who Darth Vader you knew he was a badass. I think this film here, he got it. And I and I think you seen this whole thing with the fight scene with him and Ray, which was awesome. That scene against the Royal Guard was 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 probably one of the best Star Wars lightsaber duels I've seen in a long time. Um the fact that these Royal Guard guys and I looked into this they actually had armor that was made to protect them from the lightsabers, which I thought was just incredible um, for this fight scene to go down the way it did. Um, but I think this that scene defined Kylo Ren as a character, but I, I, I think I also accepted the guy that plays him as that character. Uh, I'll let you go first, Ken. Yeah, I mean, definitely that fight scene was definitely... a. Uh, um... Well done. I do like the armor. I do like the weaponry they were using. I do like the fact that someone got around to creating armor that maybe, well, we got all these Jedi's running around with lightsabers. Maybe we should come up with a defensive weapon. I do like they finally did that. Yes, I would agree. I would agree that also Kylo was less of a whiny little bitch in this movie. Yeah, um, I'm going to ask ask you the same question, but I got a question posed to us from somebody on uh, the Facebook. He was asking how we felt about Kylo Ren just telling Ray that her parents there was nothing special about her parents. Her parents were just people who gave birth to her, and they just dumped her. Do you believe that? Because I, I, I don't believe that story. I'm going to ask you, Oscar, and see what you say about Kylo Ren, too. Yeah, that was one of the biggest uh, points of discussion about the movie was that whole piece about her parents. And I think what everybody's talking about is that they've purposely left it open that uh, – they, they may very well have a plan, but they've left it open that they can do a lot of different things. And so even though Kylo Ren was trying to uh, plant a firm idea in her mind and, and she started believing it because she lost a little bit of self-confidence uh, yes. as she found out on, when she was going through her training. So, uh, so he succeeded in what he was trying to do by saying that, mm-hmm. but they're not bound by it for continuing the story, and I think – that when they try to when they try to go tell a little bit more of her background story, which they'll get into probably in the next mm-hmm. film, I guess, uh, and and maybe more so in the books, uh, but there'll be there'll be a lot more, and I think it'll be interesting to see what storyline they do decide to go with, uh, because right now I think they have tremendous uh, options, and uh, I, I I don't think they have a firm idea. I think they were waiting for this one to clear a little bit uh, as they develop it, so it'll be interesting to see. Ken, your thoughts. Oh, I totally think we're getting led down the garden path. I mean, anybody who believes that this is how they're going to leave it, oh, come on. No, no, no. I think they're – I'm feeling we're getting set up again. You know, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. There's no question about it. I don't know who they are, but they're just, they're just not a bunch of traitors who gave up Ray. No, no. Something's I, going on there. I feel the same way, and, it, and I'll tell you why I feel the same way, and it goes back to Force Awakens when she gets the Millennium Falcon to fly. And I said to myself, I don't think that ship was just left there as they wanted us to believe. I don't believe that ship, that ship, the Millennium Falcon was there for that reason. And there's a scene in Force Awakens when Rey is going through her stuff and she has an X-Wing fighter pilot helmet. And that, and that, that connection to that helmet and that Millennium Falcon, I'm like, no, there's a reason why this Millennium Falcon is here. There's a reason why, and somebody knows that she was going to end up with that ship. So now when they, when Kylo Ren says to her, and you guys make a great point, when he says to her, your parents were nothing, they just left you. You're right. He did that because he wanted to take that confidence from her because he knew that she's at that point where she was more powerful than him. So he had to do whatever he could to create doubt in her so he could remain more powerful than her. I think, again, her parents are going to be somebody special, and I think we're going to learn this one in the film to come. So I I agree with you guys, too. Okay, do we uh, are we are we done with that? Because we uh, need to talk about. Uh, hold on, we, we got touch- a question. The the okay. chat is popping. Okay, uh, Ken, somebody you you've been reading the books. Uh, yeah. Someone asked, 
do you think the films will explain exactly who Snoke is or was and was the what I, I guess if you've been reading the books, will do you think there'll be a little bit more of Snoke in the books that you've read? Okay, what I'm reading about from the books, because Snoke really, is, unfortunately, they don't develop Snoke at all in the books. And I have my own personal theories, but yes, I think they're going to have to develop Snoke a lot more, because if, for those of you who haven't read the books, what happens with after the Battle of Shaku, the Empire goes out into the outer, the uh, the uncharted territories, the outer reaches, I forget whatever term they're using now, mm-hmm. and because there's apparently a very strong connection to the dark side of the force out there something is calling them out there whether mm. it's snoke whether it's Snoke's species i don't know so i think they're going to do something about it i think they have to because there's something something went on out there we don't know what it was but something actually went out went on out there and i think that that's going to be developed so yeah. well here well here's the big thing and people forget 2018 we have two major star wars projects coming out we have the young han solo project and we have the young kenobi project coming out two different storylines but very important storylines to the star wars world that young solo and that young kenobi storyline is going to be very crucial to what we see and what we learn about how these characters come to be we may find out some stuff about snoke early on we may find out stuff about ray's parents and kylo ren and and things like that as to how these people came to be we know that kylo ren was the son of han solo and and princess leia um you know we there's a lot of stuff there that that we we're gonna we're gonna figure out and come through ricky fitz is asking he says exactly many stories are written incomplete to allow the audience to wonder what's next it attracts the audience thank you ricky for putting that out there wow the chat is our first show back after the first year and the chat is popping we've got people in there i gotta thank them for watching and dropping questions in there for us we're not usually used to this stuff so it's kind of catching me off guard but uh overall guys it was a good film um jj abrams is is killing it right now um with the star wars saga As I said, we got the Young Solo and the Young Kenobi projects that are coming out. Um, Rogue One was a was a big hit, and I believe um, there's another. I believe there's another standalone movie coming out um, based on on Chewbacca. I thought also on Disney. I I haven't heard that, but it could be. It could be. Not on Disney. I'm not sure. I have to double check on that because there's so many false stories out there that people. Yeah, well, that's right. Disney's been doing that a lot. They've been putting out a lot of false stories. Yeah, uh, to cover what they're doing, but gentlemen. Yeah, we got to get into our pick seven fifty three. I, I think we need to talk some football here. Yeah, playoffs, man. We okay, playoffs. because I don't know about you, but I think we need to talk about. I know that the Patriots and Giants weren't playing last weekend, but I think we need to talk about the wild card round because is somebody spiking the water out there? Because there's some weird crap going on. Did anybody see the Titans-Chiefs game other than me? Yes. Look, look, look. Why does this game surprise anybody? What did we say about the Chiefs when the Chiefs beat the Patriots early on? What did we say? We I said it. You have pretenders and what? And I said the Chiefs are always usually the pretenders. and They choke. They choked again. <laughs> they choke like a rookie porn star. Oh! I'm just saying. I'm just saying all right, all right. Let me let me let me get an input. Here. Let me go to the uh, to the uh, other wild card game that I care about: the Jaguars versus the Bills. Is anybody else surprised that the Jaguars didn't like utterly crush the Bills? The only one by a touchdown. Granted, winning is winning. I understand that. Well, but, the weather conditions sucked, and the Bills have an excellent defense, and I think that that made the difference. Really? So you think not surprising? It. it the weather had been nicer, the Bills, the Jaguars touched a little more, they would have crushed them. But you're not surprised. I'm I not surprised. Sinister one? I'm, I'm not surprised. All right. Um, Falcons and Rams. I mean, I thought Rams were going to give up, a, you know, put a little bit of a show. They, you know, weren't the colossal embarrassment I was expecting them to be. And then the Panthers Saints. Uh I, I didn't see that game. Did anyone see that game? Yes. Um, I I actually was working that night. I want that was one of the games I did want to see, and I did hear it ended in controversy with the refs. Uh, so we had it was like the third game of, of the last three weeks that ended in controversy with the refs. Uh, Ashway, can we get into that real quick as to what happened at the end of that I game? I didn't see it. Yeah. I don't remember the 
controversy. I, I'm trying to uh, – my mind's drawing a blank on that one. I thought the game, you know, came down pretty well. Uh, the Saints almost blew it. Uh, they they had a very controversial decision where they went for it on fourth down. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think in, in hindsight, they were – you know, it was a brilliant move. Uh, it, and it maybe it, you know, saved them the game or not. I guess the, the call – that the Panthers were upset about was, uh, I think it was a non. No, yeah. It's, basically, the Panthers choked at the very end. If you want to know, so what happened was this. this <laughs> I mean, that's well, really they, well, so, they something they happened because they fired Mike Shula today. They fired yeah. Mike Shula today, so they weren't happy with whatever happened at the end of that game. <laughs> well, Cam Newton didn't play well, so that's part of it. But <laughs> and you can't fire your marquee can't fire him. But no, here's what happened. So on fourth down. The Saints, uh, instead of punting to try to pin Carolina deep where they'd have one minute to go the whole length of the field because they needed a touchdown to, to win, mm-hmm. uh, they, they went for it. And everybody's wondering what the hell they would do that for because it was fourth and long and, and they were risking giving the Carolina the ball at midfield, which is more than enough time. But anyway, the whole plan was that Drew Brees was going to was gonna launch it deep so it would be as good as a punt. And so, you know, if some, by some miracle they caught it, game over. And if Carolina, you know, goes gets the interception, then, uh, then of course, it's just like a punt. So that's what they wound up doing and it worked out. Then Carolina, they had a few plays where the, in, in no time whatsoever, they marched the ball all the way across uh, midfield and, you know, were going deep and it was looking like they were going to win the game. And that's where I think the controversy was. Uh, Cam Newton was sacked. There was uh, a grounding call, and I think that's the one that was controversial, whether or not it should have been intentional grounding. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I didn't think it was that off. I mean, obviously, not every call is going to be 100% accurate, but I don't think that this one was an outrageously bad call. Um, And anyway, you know, they made bad – they had bad decision-making at the end. They they had the chance to to win, and and they didn't. And first of all, I'm happy they didn't. I don't like the (laughs) Panthers. Uh, I'm much more happy to see the Saints go up to Minnesota, and that'll be a fun game to watch. But uh, you know, I, I thought it was you know it was a pretty well done game. The Saints did their best to try to blow it at the end, but Carolina couldn't get it done. End of story. Mm-hmm. So, so we got okay, our games. Well, We're here for this weekend. All right, you got them. Yeah, I got them. Well, that's an excellent segue since we're just talking about uh, who's going to play the Vikings, and we now know it's the Saints. So R squared. Saints versus the Vikings. What do we got? You know, it, it's. I, I think the Saints are on a roll, but uh, Minnesota had a week to rest, and they're playing at home. I got to go with. The, I got to go with the Vikings. Okay, Sears to one. Vikings were playing good ball at home, man, and you know what? They're fired up, and this is their first playoff that you know appearance in a long time. Um, I I'm looking for Minnesota with the upset this weekend. Minnesota is where dreams go to die. I'm sorry. The Saints, from what I heard, I didn't see the game. We're not playing all that well. Vikings have rested. They're playing at home, going with the Vikings. Mm. Okay. Since to one, being the fact that one of your children is an Eagles fan, the Battle of the Birds, Atlanta at at Philadelphia. What do we got? Oh, you know what? If this, if this game was in Atlanta, you know what? I'd, I'd give some hope to Atlanta, but this, look. <laughs> Here's the deal. This game hinges on how Nick Foldy plays. If Nick Foldy can play like Carson Wentz, they've got the win. If Nick Foldy comes out and plays like crap, it's all done. But I have a feeling with the rest, I have a feeling that this 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 Eagles team is taking home the win. And I don't think the fans are going to allow the Falcons to come into Philly and lose. No way. Not in Lincoln Financial. No, 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 no. Nope. <laughs> okay. Philadelphia all the way. <laughs> all right. Well, th- uh, thank you for hedging your bets there. Tell us how you really felt. No, R squared. Battle of the Birds. Eagles, you know, Falcons. I'll tell you what. Atlanta has a chance because of timing. You know, we're, they're going to be in the middle of a thaw. It's going to be in the 40s, which is quite balmy for January in Philadelphia. They're going to lose their weather advantage. I mean, just think about it. If the game was last week, Atlanta wouldn't have a prayer of going in there in those conditions. So uh, I do think Atlanta has a chance. They went in there. Yeah, I think the Rams lost that game. They played like crap. They choked. Uh, But I have to give credit to Atlanta for going in there and beating a very good defense and shutting down a very good offense. So Atlanta's got a real shot here. But I'm going to give Philadelphia the nod. I think they they practiced with Nick Foles. They revised the offense to to 
you know, go to his strengths as opposed to Carson Wentz's strengths. Uh, and they have a really good team on both sides of the ball. They're playing at home. I got to go Philadelphia. Okay. Georgia teams have found more ways to choke and blow things the last two years <laughs> than I know what to do with. I'm sorry. Atlanta, they got beat up last week. I don't care if they won. They got beat up. Philadelphia is rested. They're hungry. They haven't seen the playoffs since I don't know when George Bush one was president. So go with the, go with Philadelphia. Hmm. Okay. Here's an interesting match of the week as far as I'm concerned. Of the four games, I think this is the most interesting one. You know, you got new school versus old school. Jacksonville Jaguars going into Pittsburgh. Um, since the one, what do you got? Look, this Jacksonville defense has been on a tear all season long with the exception of the last three weeks. Jacksonville has played some crappy ball. They're going into Pittsburgh. It's always a dog fight. But again, I'm, I'm not – Mike Tomlin has made some bad decisions. As much as I want to see the Steelers come out with a win and come to play the Patriots here, I don't know. I, I, I'm feeling Jaguars. I think the Jaguars are going to take this game this week. R squared? You know, it's interesting. Jaguars are a good team. They've been a little bit disappointing towards the end of the season, although granted they tried to lose the last game. They were resting a little bit. Uh, so it's interesting. I think if there's any game that's going to be an upset this week – this is the one that could be the upset where the Jags have a chance. But I got to go with Pittsburgh. They had a week off. They're playing at home. They're an experienced team. Uh, I just think you, you look at all the intangibles and they, they go in favor of Pittsburgh. So I, I got to give the Steelers the edge. Okay. This is exactly the type way teams lose games. I think Pittsburgh's already looking to, looking forward to the Patriots. I think they made their mind they're going to have – a rematch with the Patriots after that, you know, the game they lost, especially after that last-minute interception. I don't think they're giving the Jaguars any credit. I think Pittsburgh is, is uh, frankly, resting on its laurels. I think Jacksonville is hungry. I have been wrong about Jacksonville every single game this season. They have won games which they shouldn't have won. They've lost games which they shouldn't have lost. I I, I think this is, going to be a, this is going to be the upset of the week. Go with the Jaguars. Okay. As far as we are concerned, the only game of the week that counts, Titans at Patriots. And, Colonel, as you are a resident, the only non-Patriot uh, super fan here, you're a Giants man. And believe it or not, the Giants aren't playing this week for some reason. I don't remember why. I don't know why. So, uh, Titans visiting the Patriots. What do you got for us? Well, listen, you know, I've always appreciated the Patriots when they weren't playing the Giants. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and – the other half of my family roots for the Patriots, so we try to avoid all conflict there. But uh, now, in, in all seriousness, I, I think this is the most boring game of the week. I think that there is you – know, look, anybody can win in the playoffs. you gotta, you got to show up. You can't take it for granted. But if there's any team that has the safest chance of winning, it's the Patriots at home against Tennessee. I give them credit for going into Kansas in a victory, but I think a lot of that has to do with Kansas City's internal problems more so than, than Tennessee. Yes, they want it bad, uh, but they know that they've lost five straight up in New England. They know that they're not as good as the Patriots. Uh, yes, it'll still be a little bit of a, a break in the weather, but, which will help Tennessee, but I just don't see this game. This is the safest game of the week. Is the one? Look, let's go back to that Denver game. When we sat here, we talked about the fact that there was bad press coming out of Foxborough and how there was te this team was not getting along and blah, 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 blah. I said, this team's going to unite, and they're going to go to Denver, and they're going to show everybody that this team is united. There's nothing going on in the locker room. Nobody's disgruntled, and guess what? They went to Denver. They got crap done, and they kicked butt. Guess what? Now here we are. We're headed into the playoffs, and once again, heading into the playoffs, we get a bad story about the Patriots not getting along and Tom Brady's unhappy and Belichick is going to go and coach the Giants next year and blah, 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 blah. It's not happening. This team is set to rule for another 15 years. Everybody knows this, and everybody's scared of it. Everybody knows that if the Patriots can make their way to the Super Bowl and Tom Brady retires, guess what? There's a chance that we may even get Garoppolo back if San Fran can't match the offer. So, with that being said, the Titans are coming in here. Marcus Mariota has to face this Patriots defense that has gotten so much better in the last five weeks. And this Foxborough fan base has been crazy. We've been cooped up in cold-ass ice weather. It's going to be 50 degrees in Foxborough come game time. 
You know what that's like for Patriots fans that have been cooped up <laughs> the last three weeks? It's going to be like work release <laughs> at Foxborough Stadium for this game. The Patriots are going to march all over the Titans. I think Oscar's got it right. I think this is the safe bet of the week and the most boring game of the weekend for anybody outside of New England. <laughs> I, I agree with Oscar. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I want to watch all four games, including this one. I just yep. don't see this one as a nail biter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, I, 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 just to respond to one thing you said, I, I think oh, Bill oh, Belichick. No, no, I think he stays in New England. I, I, I think he and Robert Kraft are going to work it all out, and they'll hug it out, and whatever the case may be. And Brady joining whatever cult he's in isn't going to break <laughs> up the team because you know he's in his last couple of years anyway. So look, they'll work it all out. They'll hug it out. There's too much at stake there. But I will say this: the Giants would be crazy to not try to get Belichick back. Remember, he started there. He was a Bill Parcells yeah, disciple. Yeah, he was defense so you keep talking about him. So you love to talk about the Belichick disciples out there. Well, he's a Parcells disciple, and all those disciples go back to Parcells. So there's mm-hmm. there's there's a connection there. The Giants would be stupid to not pursue it. But Belichick, I think, is going to stay in New England and end his career there. So uh, no no fear, no fear. I, I would have liked to see Gruden go there instead of with the Raiders. Yeah. The, Raiders yeah. the Raiders are going to be playing in Nevada and Las Vegas next year. They yeah. had to break the bank, so that $100 Did million... you see that contract? $100 million for 10 years. Of course he went there. My God. God, I'd go there. Yeah, he better he better win some games there. Yeah. It's not what he did in Tampa Bay. I'll tell you that. Oh God, <laughs> I'll tell you that, man. Good show, eight oh seven. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Tonight. I don't get I don't get to chime in. Oh, go ahead, Ken. God, I was, I, now I, was, I was thinking I'd just say is I'm going to pick the Titans. That's really to piss everybody off. But no, the favor. I'm yeah. sorry, hey, the Titans are going to couldn't you know. Then no one's coming into New England in 50 degree weather, which most Patriots fan consider a heat wave, and showing up the Patriots in a divisional round. Uh, uh-uh. I do not think so. It's the the, the AFC. The looks. Let's face it. The a, the AFC championship games have come down. The Patriots, probably the Steelers. Although I am wouldn't be surprised the Jaguars come in as well. So that's that. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's a no brainer. Like I said, it. We, uh, us Patriots fans have been cooped up. We had a week without football. People were forced to go out and shovel their driveways, and you got people like from Situate whose cars were enveloped in ice and water because we got flooded here. Um, we've had minus 10-degree weather. Like I said, Foxborough is going to be like work release program for this game. This is going to be crazy. So good stuff, guys. we got to get out of here. 808. We'll be back next week. Uh, we got some guests lined up that are going to be coming on this show real soon, and we'll talk about that next week. But uh, we're going to go around the horn and say our goodbyes. We'll let uh, Ken Diesel go first tonight. All right. Just want to say thank you and Happy New Year to everyone. Hope everyone had a happy and safe Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever. I want to thank all of our uh, listeners, all 12 of them. And I got all I can say, people, is welcome to 2018. Strap yourselves in. It is going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> Go ahead, R. Squid. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Starting off 2018 the, the, the right way. This is great, especially for people who sent us notes to talk about. We love it. Keep it up. Uh, one thing to watch for, a prediction for the year, is uh, not all. There are still some very honorable Republicans out there, but a few notables like uh, Jim Jordan and Devin Nunes – uh, are sinking to new lows right now. They're violating the Constitution, their oath, and everything else like I've never seen in American politics with this whole cover-up thing. Watch. This is going to be the big story of 2018. It's always the cover-up, not that you're going to go mm-hmm. down worse than President Trump. Watch. Yeah, we, you know, we've been talking about this stuff, and you know, 2018 doesn't seem to disappoint when it comes to talking politics. And let's see what happens here. There's a lot of people that have left this Trump administration. You know, Omarosa Manigault, she was one of the last <laughs> ones to, to go. Um, it, it's funny because when we closed out the year 2017, you know, how they, you know, like at the Academy Awards when they have that memorandum for all those who passed away. Mm-hmm. We really, we realistically could have put together one for the White House for 2017 <laughs> and listed Sean Spicer, Omarosa. Uh, there's just the so mooch. many. <laughs> we just could have just, we could have just went through this whole musical thing of all those who were there. And it's funny because it started with Sean Spicer, and you know we thought we would, we, you know everybody thought, oh this is just a fluke, it's just one guy. 
the, we're not going to see this the whole time of of Trump's career in the first year. And then guess what? We went from Spicer, and it just continued on with just just nothing but craziness. <laughs> and it's going to continue. And God only knows how the reality show is going to end. Uh, Ricky Fitz, thank you for jumping in on the playoff talk. Ricky Fitz is picking Pittsburgh to win this weekend. If Pittsburgh pulls it off, um, they'll be here next week, and it's going to be one hell of a game, to be honest. We'll be definitely talking about it next week. So tune in, Ricky, and uh, hang out for the show, man. And uh, look, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Good show. Um, Ken, did you have anything you wanted to add? Nope, nope. just be safe, Pilks. Be safe. Yeah, back to work. Uh, enjoy the warm weather. And uh, other than that, SpongeBob, can you do me a big favor for 2018? and close out the show like you usually do, and take us home. Well, see you next Tuesday. Thanks for tuning into the booth at hubazoo.com. Please make sure to tune in for more booth next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. Become a fan on their Facebook page and check out their podcast on iTunes and iHeartRadio. The Booth is a Sinista One production hosted by Sinista One, Ken Diesel, and R Squared. I've got to start hanging out with friends that are a little more intelligent and understand politics and stuff. It's just that I'm up on this level up here, and all my friends are down here. Me, nah. You guys, nah. Maybe a little more down, down in here. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Kill the